This is kind of fucking cool, dude. Guys, um, I'm sort of, I'm sorry. I'm getting really fucking distracted, but I'm like nerding out. I just downloaded OBS Studio um, because I'm by myself and I didn't want to record a video with my phone. And uh, you, you guys are about to just get some raw, unfiltered yapping. Fucking just me rambling. Okay. Um, yeah, normally I use, uh, we use Skype to record all of our videos, you know, but this, like, we might be able to start streaming with this shit, dude, I'm, I'm, this is pretty fucking cool, anyways, that's not what I really wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to make a video about lust vampirism, or tantric vampirism, uh, but the more I thought about it, I think a more appropriate topic, because this falls into, like, sex magic, um, but I think magic with sex is going to be most appropriate. Um, and it's just kind of been on my mind lately. Okay? So I think any, any time that you're using any of sex to fuel a spell, a ritual, a manifestation, or if you're uh, draining somebody, you know, that's going to fall under sex magic. I know... Like, uh, Crowley practiced this a lot, and I think his practice mostly involved assuming god forms and, and things of that nature, but we'll, we'll get more into that. Um, I have my own ways of doing sex magic, some things that I've channeled, um, but there's really no right or wrong way to do it, as long as you can get it to work. Uh, my preferred method of doing this, and this is with a consenting partner, I also want to say, before I start talking about any of this, if you're going to be practicing stuff like this, please practice safe sex, because you don't want infections, diseases, or worse, kids, uh, accidentally. Anyways, uh, my preferred method of using uh, or practicing sex magic is going to be um, very much how we do how I do normal rituals when I want to cause change. Okay, it's going to be raising a sacred space. It's going to be, um, you know, thinking of a desire, final outcome, and then releasing that once everything is done. The only real difference is you're going to be using this um, while you, like you're going to be using your orgasms essentially to fuel and feed your manifestation. Okay. Um, the way that I do this, okay, so once you raise a sacred space and everything is sort of encapsulated and protected in your space, what you're going to do is, um, this is what's called loading or impregnating your space. You're going you're gonna to visualize as much as you can a, you know, whatever it is that you are looking to manifest, right? You're going to see that inside this space, okay? After it's there and it's solid, since the sacred space is still there and encapsulated you, um, you just go about your normal business, okay? And you are going to use your orgasms to feed that visualization, okay? Once it's all said and done, when you uh, break the sacred space, you want to release that into the universe, okay? The way that I usually do this, the way that I imagine this, as I see it just floating up and then dissolving, okay? Very powerful stuff. What you can do to add to this, okay? This is something I haven't really played around with much. However, I have channeled a couple rituals. I just, most of the people that I hook up with are profane. They don't practice any kind of magic. And I think it's just kind of like woo-woo stuff. So I don't... You can't teach anybody who has no, like, any kind of, like, witchcraft background what to fucking do, you know? It takes a while to get to that point, especially with sex magic. Um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh, you can, um, you can add sigils to this, right? So you can either keep the sigils separate, and if you're by yourself, you can use your orgasm to charge the sigil. I think everybody knows how to do that. Uh, you can draw sigils on your body, and then while you are performing, uh, you just want to give special attention to that sigil. And drawing it on different parts of your body will do different things, too. Like if you draw this on your navel area, your navel chakra, that is 
you know, associated with creation, with creativity. Um, if you're doing empowerment, you draw it on your solar plexus, you know, that is a, a big portal right there, okay? That can, you can use that to draw energy within yourself, okay, to cause change. Um, you draw symbols on your neck, you know, I've got a neck tattoo, uh, which can be touched, and if people give attention to it, it can be used to suck energy in and given as an offering to my patron. Um, which, I guess we'll, we'll just jump right into that. Um, this is going to sort of touch on God forms. You can use sex as offerings to whatever entity that you're working with, okay? You can either invoke beforehand and then start performing, or you can assume a what's called a God form, okay? It's basically just visualizing and imagining yourself as that entity as best as you can while you're performing. You know, very, very primal, very animalistic, especially if you're invoking demons while doing this. Um, oftentimes when I'm doing this, I will feel the entity jump into me, and then after that it's, it's whatever they want to do. You know, I just go with whatever they would like to do. And it's been it's been working out for me so far, okay. Um, but you can you you can assume any any god form of any pantheon that you want to do. Uh, you just want to choose something that's appropriate to the manifestation that you're working with. So like if you are, you know, doing sex magic for some kind of wealth ritual, you want to think about something that, you know, has like a Jupiter correspondence, or that sort of archetype, and beforehand you want to think about okay if I was this deity if I was this entity what would my body look like well how would I act and you want to assume that archetype while you are performing okay uh, you can use and again um, I'm gonna jump back a little bit you can use sex to fuel a spell okay so if you have a spell jar if you have candles going uh, you can just direct all that energy again you want to raise this sacred space and you just want to direct your orgasms at that jar, okay, or at that candle, whatever it is you're working towards. Um, this is particular. So, this is particularly powerful if you're a woman, okay. Azazel told me so. If you are a woman, you are the most important thing in performing sex magic, okay, because you are you are literally like the the bringer of life for humans, okay? Everything is birthed through you. And you can use that very powerfully for spells, rituals, manifestations, anything, okay? So if you have a partner uh, who understands this, you can, they can help you get there over and over and over again to keep fueling whatever spell it is you're working towards or whatever manifestation it is that you want okay um, that's pretty much going to cover uh, the sort of working things to cause change in the world externally um, you can mix and match most of these things up to suit your needs but I want to talk about lust vampirism okay so any kind of vampirism is going to benefit you and a client, a partner, your, whoever it is that you're hooking up with, okay? And I was unaware of how much this could affect somebody, okay? If you're going to start practicing this, again, practice safe sex. Um, but I would not recommend doing this to somebody over and over and over again, just because of how rapidly I've seen people decline from this, okay? Um, so I fucked up my ankle a couple weeks ago, right? And on top of invoking, you know, Camel, um, up here, uh, Raphael, to help heal my ankle, I was vampirizing this woman and directing all that towards healing my ankle. And I was able to get it done in about three days and start walking on it again. I was able to feel completely better by a week's time. I mean, bruising and everything. And I've really fucked up my ankle. Okay? 
what I saw happen to this person, okay, was afterwards, the first thing that happened that was very apparent to me was they would get, they would get sick, okay? Like the day, the day following, they would get sick for, for a while. And then I started to see episodes of depression and anxiety, um, which I, you know, you can write off for the first couple of times. When this kept happening, I was like, okay, some, she's being affected by me draining her, right? Uh, the next thing that I saw happen with this person, the more that I did this, was they, they developed a very unhealthy attachment to me, which has happened to me before, okay, when I'm doing stuff like this, but it was like they needed me, right? Um, very high highs, very low lows. Oops. What I, after that, it, this started bleeding into their work life, all right? And they decided they were going to give up their job. They, were, they weren't happy. Everything was falling apart. And, you know, oh, this person's going away and, and so on and so forth. Nothing in their life seemed to go right. Wow. Over on my end, I am booming and beaming and everything, I'm just soaring. Okay, so I felt kind of bad, but not enough to stop, you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't see this person as anything long term, okay? I was, it, this was more for my benefit, okay? And I know that sounds evil, but again, we're practicing black magic, okay? Um, and at the end of it all, dude, they were just beating themselves up, not physically, but they were beating themselves up from just really small things and flipping out and this and that and then snapping at me, which I understood, but uh, it really tore them up, you know? And that's the, that's the kind of things that you can see when you are draining people uh, of any kind of vampirism, but uh, lust vampirism is very, very potent. Okay, it feels good when you perform it, and, and they will definitely feel it. There was one time where, uh, I mean, she got sick immediately after because of how much I drained her. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, how do you exactly go about performing something like this? Well, remember when I was talking about raising a sacred space? So you don't have to do this to observe this, but the next time that you finish, okay, after you're done performing, I want you, and you're like breathing heavy and stuff like that, I want you to roll over and with the same vision that you used to scry or the same vision that you used to activate sigils, I want you to just gaze into the air, okay? What you will notice is these waves. It sort of looks like uh, radiation or heat and it's just permeating everything you can see you can see the walls sort of blend and move as if there was something hot underneath it no matter where you look and it's just it's just going everywhere because it's not contained if you're with a partner you can look at them you can see this rising off of them if you look at yourself you can see this rising off yourself okay that is energy when you are draining somebody, what you are doing is you are, con you are, by an act of will, containing your energy and using whatever is being released off the partner and bringing it into yourself, okay? I have found that once that connection is made, it is, it is like a, a stream of water that just keeps pouring into yourself. And there are three particular locations that I have found emit the strongest amounts of energy when you are draining somebody. That is from the neck, that is from uh, your solar plexus and chest, and that is from the navel. Okay, Anywhere around those areas, anywhere that can be stimulated, will release a large amount of energy. Okay, So, uh, bringing attention to the neck, you know, like kissing, licking the neck, and almost... Uh, you know, like a straw, 
pulling that into yourself and directing that energy with your breath into yourself. It's, it's this continuous pull, okay? And then as, as they are, you know, finishing, you want, you want to pull all that release in and it, it, you should feel a great rush come into yourself, okay? And then again, with the breath and with your will, you want to push that to all parts of yourself. Or in my case, I was using this to heal my foot. So I was, I was pulling that into myself and directing it towards my foot, you know? Um, this is just a, a method that I have found that works for me, okay? There's probably tons of ways to do this, you know? Um, so if you're playing around with this, I encourage you to experiment and see what works for you, okay? If you don't know where to start, uh, try what I just suggested and see what kind of tricks that you learn along the way. Azazel has been particularly great in teaching me this sort of practice and great efficacy. And since this is a practice, I don't ex don't expect yourself to be perfect at it right off the bat, okay? A lot of times it is hard to remain, you know, keep focused on that and also perform at the same time. You know, it is a skill that you develop, you know? Same with any kind of sex magic. And this is a skill and a practice that you have to, you have to practice, you know? That's why it's called a practice. Um, but yeah, that, that pretty much covers most of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, again, this software is so cool. I don't know how I'm going to post this to the channel yet, but it's going it's to be a shorter video. I want to thank you guys all for checking this video out. Please like and subscribe, and I will tune in with you next time.